we have had a conversation already about uh, floating point numbers and we are using a toy problem, a little 8-bit example of what the floating point representation looks like. The first number is the sign, the second three numbers are the biased exponent, and the last four numbers are the normalized significant. Each one of these is a little bit different than we might expect. The normalized significant is one point something times two to the something, and this something is stored in the biased exponent. Now we have these special numbers, right? Zero is represented as the exponent being zero and the significant being zero. Infinity is represented as the exponent being all ones and the significant being zero. Not a number is represented as exponent being all ones and the uh, significant being something else, not all zeros. This last number is for uh, a special purpose number called denormalized or subnormal or denormal. And as the name implies, it means we're going to use zero point something for the significant instead of one point something. They're not normal. They're denormal. They're less than normal. Normalized numbers are one point something. These are zero point something. And so what this is is an attempt to squeeze out just a tiny little bit more resolution into the floating point representation. It sort of fills the gap between uh, the, the largest negative, negative exponent, negative 2 to the negative 3, and positive 2 to the negative 3, right? Because right in there, there's a gap of numbers. 0 is represented by this special number, and denormal fills in that gap sort of between those two numbers. Now, a reasonable question to ask is, what should the exponent of these denormal numbers be? And this is a point of some contention, right? One argument says, well, the exponent is clearly encoded as 0, 0, 0. Our traditional way of telling us what that value is is to subtract the bias. Our bias in this toy problem is 3, so this should be negative 3. The problem with that is negative 3, uh, 2 to the negative 3 is what we're talking about, right? 1.0 times 2 to the negative 3 would be a bias number that would be sort of next in line after the exponent negative 2, negative 1, whatever. But these are not 1 point something. These are 0 point something. So it's 0 point something times 2 to the negative 3, which means if we were to shift that that 0 by 1, right, if it was 0 0.1 times 2 to the negative 3, that's 1 point something times 2 to the negative 2. And so we're actually going to use 2 to the negative 2 as the biased exponent because that's going to more accurately align with where that gap in the numbers between 2 to the negative 2 and 2 to the, or negative 1 times 2 to the negative 2, positive 1 times 2 to the negative 2. Let me maybe draw that out because it's a little confusing and people always wonder why the biased exponent is not the number that's encoded, right? We have negative 1.0, let's say, times 2 to the negative 2, which is our smallest number on one side. And then we have um, positive 1.0 times 2 to the negative 2 on the other side. And then there's this sort of gap between them, right, that we're trying to fill. We put a special number of zero there, but what we want to do is have this number filled by sort of these denormal numbers. So 0 0.1 times 2 to the negative 3, imagining a case where we use the bias that's actually encoded there, negative 3, that's the same as 1.0 times 2 to the negative 2. Well, we already have that as an encoding we would have two different representations for the same encoding because this denormal number says it starts with a 0 instead of starting with a 1. So a normalized representation and a denormalized representation of the same number is a bit of a waste, and it can be confusing because two representations representing the same value, are they equal? Are they not? It's confusing. So instead, we're actually going to use negative 2 as the exponent for our denormal numbers, and so the next number here is going to be 0 0.1 times 2 to the negative 2. And that means that we're not overlapping. Uh, we're not having two different representations of the same number. The drawback of that is that when we have a number like this, right, an 8-bit, in there's a little toy problem, where the exponent is all zeros, and we say that this represents a denormal number, the exponent that it represents is not 2 to the negative 3, but in fact 2 to the negative 2 which is where people get confused. And we'll do this again when we do the full-sized representation, um, but that is uh, why we use negative 2 as the exponent instead of negative 3 for our denormalized numbers. 
Now we reduce a bit of precision because we lose a bit or two or three, right? We can have 0 0.000 something times two to the negative two, but we're filling in the gap between one point something times two to the negative two, right? Plus or minus one point something times two to the negative two. And the reason we use <coughs> this, uh, not we don't use negative three as the bias is because that number is reserved, right? All zeros in the exponent means we're doing something special. Either we're doing zeros or we're doing these denormalized numbers. And if we're doing something special, it doesn't matter if this equates to the exponent that we want or not. It's a little unusual. So we have to encode a separate kind of math. Now, the thing to keep in mind here is with all of these special numbers, <clears throat> we need to build hardware that will do this, right? Again, the whole point of this course is to rebuild a computer from scratch. Well, building hardware that does floating point numbers is very complicated. We have a lot of special cases. We have a lot of special things we have to do. We have to shift numbers back and forth to make the exponents line up. We have to multiply to figure out what the exponents are. We have to add. It's very complicated. We have to filter out these special cases. We have to detect if the exponent is all ones or all zeros and then do something special. Right? So the hardware for floating point numbers is very complicated and denormalizing is one of the things that makes it more complicated. But it does give us a little bit of extra space. So in the next video, now we'll talk a little bit about the standard IEEE formats. Now, instead of our toy problem, we'll talk about um, the 32-bit the and 64-bit problems. And then we'll talk about a little bit more how they're implemented.